Shelf, the Robbins Library video blog all about books and reading. My name is Maura Didi. I'm the assistant director here. And I'm Linda Dynick, the head of adult services. Cool. And today we're going to talk to you about reading challenges, what they are and how to partake in one. So a reading challenge is just a goal that you set for yourself that has to do with reading. So it could be that you just want to read a certain number of books or that you want to read in a genre that you are unfamiliar with or um, there's many different ways that they're done and it could be for an entire year, for a season, or for a month. Cool. Um, that's exciting. What are some examples? How could you, how do I find a reading challenge if I wanted to do one? Well, a lot of them are sponsored on blogs. So you could just like, if you want to read Jane Austen, you could probably just Google reading challenge Jane Austen and find it. Um, but um, there's actually a, there's one blog that collects a lot of different challenges. It's called the Novel Challenge and we'll link to the to that blog in our show notes. Yes, a lot of things we talk to will be linked in our show notes. Um, so you can read along with us. Um, one, um, so tell me, are you participating in any challenges? I'm participating in two different challenges. One of them I've done for a few years now. It's called the TBR Pile Challenge, and the TBR Pile is a to-be-read pile. And it's basically um, a challenge where I take like a list of you know, 10 books that have been on my list to read for more than a year and say, this is the year that I am going to read them. Um, and I'm also doing one called the Bardathon Challenge. Um, this is the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death. And so this challenge mm. is um, sponsored by a blog. I'll link to it. And basically, I'm going to be reading two comedies, two tragedies, and watching a live performance. Oh, cool. Interesting. Are you hoping to find a live performance in the area to watch? That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. Um, but if I don't find a live performance that I can get to, I'm probably just going to check out one of our, our DVDs from the library of a performance. Oh, that's so what a good call. What about you? Are you doing any reading challenges this year? I am. So I started, um, I learned about the Book Riot Read Harder Challenge um, uh, at, the end of, uh, at the end of December. Um, and I was really attracted to that challenge because I like the the, the scope um, mm -hmm. and it really kind of got me out of um, challenging me to read new genres or um, authors that I might not normally pick up. So uh, there's a lot of different categories for books set in like the Middle East mm -hmm. or authors that are maybe born in Africa or Southeast Asia, reading plays, reading a book mm -hmm. the year you were born. Um, so it really was attracted to me to help sort of, you know, broaden my scope. Um, and help me pick some books mm. that I might not normally pick. That sounds yeah. very challenging, like it would yeah. really get you out of your comfort it zone. It does, it was. It was hard to, it was It was challenging to create the list of, uh, and there's 24 different categories, so I, yeah. I spent a lot of time a lot. trying to, books I wanted to read, what categories they would go mm -hmm. into, and also um, finding new books. Um, the other one that I'm doing is our own Robbins Library 2016 Ooh. Reading Challenge. Um, so we came up with our own, the Adult Services Department um, came up with their own, um, sort of inspired by mm -hmm. all these reading challenges out there. So a way to have, make these challenges local um, and to have fun, both staff mm -hmm. um, and for our patrons. So you can pick up one of these pink bookmarks, which is really handy. Um, I've just transferred it from book to book as I check things off. Um, at our reference desk and at the end of the year you can enter it in for some prizes. Um, and are there any rules around the challenge? It's very loosey-goosey. You don't have to give us the names of the books that you read for the challenge. Just check it off. Um, and whether you only read one book on the challenge or if you complete every category, you can still enter to win. Um, so I encourage cool. everyone to try it out. Pick one up. Um, and we'll be talking about our progress of this on our blog as well, which you can check out on our website. So how are your challenges going? So far, so good. Um, for my TBR challenge, um, I have 10 books on my list and I've read four of them already, including- That's really incredible progress. It's only March. Yeah, well, I'm anticipating losing momentum later, so I am front loading, basically. Um, so good. I like the, the last strategy. <laughs> the last one I read for that was uh, one of the long ones. It's called The Winter Rose by Jennifer Donnelly, and it's the second in a trilogy, and I read the first one like three years ago, so it was really time to read mm. the second one. Um, and for the Bardathon, I have read Macbeth, um, and I just started reading Hamlet, so um, that's going pretty well, too. I'm very happy that... Uh, 
Shakespeare's not as challenging as it was in high school, which was the last time I tried to read him. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, so that's going pretty well. Good. Yeah, so what about you? How are yours going? Good. Well, slow and steady. I um, I don't ha I can't report that I've read as many books as you have, um, but I did read two. Um, one was for uh, about politics in the country you're from, so I read um, Between the World and Me by Ta-Nehisi Coates, mm -hmm. which was a really... Um, a well-written, beautiful read about the experience of blacks in America. The other book that I've read was um, The Invisible by Hand by Ayad Akhtar, um, which is a play, uh, and it involves an American who was kidnapped in Pakistan, and he basically teaches his captors how to short markets and make money. Um, so it was, a, it was, again, also a perspective that I'm not quite familiar with about like mm -hmm. terrorism and the yeah. experience of being a captor, a little bit about um, some of the principles of Islam as well. But I really liked it because it was so short um, and the, the, dia mm -hmm. the, the dialogue just moves the plot along really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but I imagine reading Shakespeare in English is much different. Right? It is. And um, how was that experience, Ben? <laughs> well, you know, it is a it is a little bit of a challenge. Um, the editions of these plays that I'm reading, um, there are a bunch of different um, published editions of Shakespeare's plays, so there's a lot to choose from. And I went with this particular edition. It was recommended by a friend. It's the Folger edition, and the way that it's laid out is each page that you open up to the play text is on the right hand page and on the left hand side oh, are notes about individual words and phrases that might be really unfamiliar to today's reader so that helps the experience a lot cool that sounds yeah. really helpful yeah nice so that's all for today that's all for today <laughs> so we're gonna link to all the challenges we mentioned minutes. in the show notes um, and then next time we're going to talk about when and why you stop reading a book. So stay tuned for the next episode of Ms. Shelved. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, readers.